Hey, what's up? Alex here. Time flies and it has been almost a year since my initial smart home tour video. That video is actually pretty short and brief. I didn't cover much about the renovation aspect and the smart home features that I put in place. So now I'm planning to do a two parts video. The first part which is this video is going to be a full walkthrough of the smart home setup I have now. Here are the topics or areas that I'll be covering in this video. I put timestamps to them so feel free to jump to any sections that you're interested in. Smart lighting is one of the main key aspects of a smart home. To achieve smart lighting in my place, I have a mixture of smart switches, smart bulbs and LED light strips. Okay, now I have switched on all the lights, let's have a quick rundown of which is which. I'll point out those that are smart bulbs or LED strip. For the rest of the lights you see are powered by smart switches. Okay, for kitchen or smart switches. In the living room, this is the smart strip for the TV backlight a smart bulb for that standing lamp. For the study room, each of the desks will be a smart strip. This is a smart bulb. Toilets don't have, gym room don't have. Then for this room, again, another light strip for the TV. Then another one here. Toilets don't have. Then for the master bedroom, it's just these two smart bulbs for the bedside. Basically, for a smart switch, it just allows you to control the on and off state, nothing more. I'm using all Akara wall switches, but a combination of different versions. Most of them are from this China version 2 gang switches. A couple of the D1 single gang switches and one of their latest H1 single gang switch. The reasons why I picked Akara. I prefer rocker type of switches instead of the touchscreen type because I like that you need not press at a very precise spot and you can basically not look at it. Design-wise, it's pure white in color. The D1 and H1 has a more squarish look. The feel of the switches are also different. Price is very affordable and the best of all is able to integrate with smart things. Not an official integration, but it works perfectly fine for my setup. For smart bulbs, not only can you control the on and off state, you can also control the brightness and even the color if you're using an RGB bulb. I have a combination of brands here. In my master bedroom bedside, these are very cheap brandless A19 bulbs I brought from Shopee that is using the Tuya Smart Life. For my living room standing lamp, this is using the E-Lite E27 RGB bulb, scheduled on automatically every day in the evening. At the corridor area, I have this Casa Filament Smart Bulb. These look the best with this kind of light feature that makes the light bulb visible. I set this to 1% brightness, also switch on automatically every day in the evening. Really love the look and feel of this. I have this link with my Akara wall switch, configured as a wireless switch which is another great feature for the Akara smart switches. In SmartThings, I can have one of the switches of my 2 gang switch to be decoupled and set to unwired. The biggest problem of having a smart bulb that is attached to a wall switch is whenever someone go and press it, the power is cut off. With this configuration, you won't have this problem anymore. For smart LED light strips, I have two brands here, E-Lite and Govi. One E-Lite strip behind my living room TV and one each for my desk in the study room. It can only display a single light at any time, comes with a switch for you to on and off and also for you to change to some of their standard colors. Elite has an official cloud to cloud integration with SmartThings which works great. The other brand is Govi. I have the Govi TV light strip that is installed on my entertainment room TV. Able to do multiple lights on a single strip and also able to change light according to your TV color display with the camera attached on top of the TV. Then I also have the Govi Lyra floor lamp at the side to create some nice ambient lighting. For Govi, there is an unofficial integration with SmartThings. If you are interested on how to set up Govi with SmartThings, I have linked a video guide in the video description below. Let's be real, taking out your phone, going to an app to access your smart home devices is not convenient at all. Fully relying on voice assistance also don't make sense all the time. For example, you have TV or videos playing in the background, then your voice assistance is not picking up what you are saying accurately. Not to mention that it is going to take like at least 10 seconds from saying out the commands to getting a response. 
So you will want to make use of sensors or wireless button triggers as much as possible to achieve that quick, immediate response on your smart home devices. For sensors, I have motion and contact sensors in my setup, a combination of brands from Xiaomi, Akara and SmartThings. At my main door, this is the Akara contact sensor. Once the door is open, it will switch on the entrance light. My kitchen has a Xiaomi motion sensor. After sunset, once you enter, it will switch on the main kitchen light. This is the SmartThings motion sensor placed in my toilet. Automatically switch on the lights when motion is detected and automatically switch off when no motion detected after 5 minutes. And lastly, SmartThings contact sensor for my bedroom wardrobe. Once open, switch on the track light and once closed, it will switch it off after 30 seconds. The SmartThings sensors are more expensive than the Xiaomi and Akara ones. Besides natively integrated the SmartThings platform, they actually work better especially for the motion sensors. Next, I have wireless switches or buttons. I love this because they can be essentially placed anywhere in the house to easily trigger smart home devices whichever way you want it. Again, I have a combination of different shapes and sizes from different brands. This Xiaomi button I place at the entrance to easily switch on or off what I want when I'm going out or back home. I have the Akara Cube right beside me in my study room to control the aircon, fan switch and so on. An Akara wireless switch in my entertainment room to control the aircon and blinds. Then lastly, this small little smart things button in my master bedroom whether it's on the bedside table or stick it somewhere, totally up to you. Most houses will just have wall switches beside your bed which you can't reach them easily unless you kind of sit upright or stretch all the way for it. That's what makes these wireless switches so convenient. So I configured this to switch on my bedside light if I do a single press. Double press will on or off the aircon. Press and hold will open or close the curtain. A very common question I got asked about is can you do a two-way light switch? In a smart home context, there is no need to hardwire a two-way switch because you can always do a two-way, three-way, up to you using this kind of wireless switches. Yes, these are battery operated, but they can last you a very, very long time. Not something that I'll worry about. Smart plugs or sockets are easily one of the easiest way to start building a smart home. The basic feature is to allow you to control the power input like an on and off switch. You can do some scheduling and combine with the routines you set. These tech-in ones powered by Tuya are pretty basic. But some sockets have additional features. Like the smart plugs from IKEA, this can help you to relay Zigbee signals. Then I also have smart plugs from Casa TP-Link that comes with energy monitoring. I'm using smart plugs with my indoor cameras, power strips attached to my study desk, and also the bunch of devices and my TV console area so that they will completely stop consuming power when I don't need them. I use a smart power strip in my entertainment room because I want to be able to control the socket individually. This is a brandless one but at least has the safety mark. Most of the brandless smart home devices are powered by Tuya Smart Life. All of these are of course centrally managed in smart things. I can't tell you how much I love a smart blind or a smart curtain solution. It really easily saves you a lot of time and effort opening and closing it multiple times every day, especially for those working from home. I have the Akara curtain motor with day curtains for my living room and blackout curtain for my master bedroom. Somfy motors with blackout blinds for living room and study room. Soma smart shade for my gym room and the Akara smart blind E1 for my entertainment room. These two are retrofit solutions. It doesn't make sense to have multiple brands here. The reason why I'm doing this is to just try out the different products. Except for the Accra Smart Blinds, the rest of them I have actually done a separate video if you'd like to check that out in more details. The Accra Smart Blind is Zigbee based and I like that it has manual controls on the device itself which aligns with the principle of a smart home. That is, if you remove away the smart home component, these smart home devices must still be able to operate normally. This is a very new product from Akara, so no integration with SmartThings yet. Hopefully that will come soon. There are more and more home appliances that are starting to get natively smart and incorporating some smart features on them. In the SmartThings platform, you can add a bunch of these like air purifier, fridge, washing machine and robot vacuum. Of course, they must all be from Samsung. Unfortunately, I only have a Samsung branded TV and their robot vacuum. 
Talking about robot vacuum, they are savior, one of the best inventions. I've been using the Samsung Jetbot Plus with the auto empty station for the past 3 months, but I'm going to start testing out the Roborock S7 and Dbot T9 for the next 3 months, so expect a comparison review video of these three sometime in December. If the home appliance is not natively smart but has a remote control for them, then you can use a IR slash RI Plaster solution to control that remote control. I have a combination of three brands here, SwitchBot, Broadlink, and Akara. In my study room, I place this SwitchBot hub on my desk that kind of looks like my company logo now. This will control my living room TV and aircon. Broadlink RM4 Pro in my kitchen to control the laundry rack and ceiling fans via RF. A SwitchBot hub mini in my master bedroom to control the aircon. And lastly, the Akara M2 hub in my entertainment room to control the TV and aircon. Only the SwitchBot has integration with SmartThings. Broadlink and Akara hubs link to my Google Home directly. Broadlink is my least favorite because of their app, but at least they can do RF. So what happens if the appliance is not natively smart and doesn't have a remote control? That is when you can make use of the SwitchBot bots to simulate the finger pressing action. For me, I have these SwitchBot bots for each of our PC. I have this included in my good morning routine and also using it if we need to remotely access our PC. I wanted to stick one for my PS5 as well but doesn't seem possible. One of the biggest selling points of staying in Singapore is because it's super safe over here. So there isn't a huge emphasis on home security unlike other countries. And also generally for apartment houses like a HDB, there isn't much you can and need to do. For Smart Doorbell, I'm still using the same which is the Smart Doorbell by Ring. But instead of using the Ring app, I have it integrated inside the SmartThings app instead and basically using it via SmartThings because somehow, I find that it's more responsive than using their own app. So I have motion sensor set. Whenever motion is detected in the defined area that you set in the Ring app, SmartThings will send a notification to my phone. Here is a demo to show you how fast I will receive the notification. I also have an automation set that whenever the doorbell is pressed, it will switch on my dining light and automatically switch it off after 10 seconds. This is very good because most of the time I'm not looking at my phone when I'm at home. And especially if I am in an online meeting, then at least you have that visual notification. Samsung TV comes with the SmartThings app in their OS. I can switch on notification for the doorbell as well. If I'm watching TV halfway, it will pop up the notification at the side. However, I can't have the Ring doorbell integrated to my Google Nest Hub because Ring is under Amazon while the Nest doorbell is under Google. Google just released their newest Nest doorbell which looks really very nice and is also cheaper than the previous version. So I might replace with that but you know, any new tech from Google won't be available in the Singapore Google Store. So I have to import it from elsewhere if I really want to get it. Next, I'm going to talk about the indoor cameras that I have installed. I have one place in the living room one place in the kitchen and one place in the master bedroom to cover all the areas I like to monitor. And the only reason why I installed these cameras is for this guy. So total of 3 cameras now, 2 of them is using these cameras from SwitchBot. Their camera is positioned as a budget choice, selling at only 30 USD each. I like that their camera is quite small and I am pretty satisfied with the video quality. For video storage, it supports local storage using the SD card slot behind or if you prefer cloud storage subscription, it does come with this option as well. There isn't like a directional pad controller on the app to control the camera facing direction, you can only manually turn it on the hardware itself. But hey, this is only 30 USD, very value for money. I have them integrated to Google Home so I can easily view the camera on my Google Nest Hub or simply via the SwitchBot app. The other camera I have is the AOTech camera, price of this is 119 SGD. It is a 1080p Full HD camera that can rotate 360 degrees with tilt and panorama function. No SD card for local video storage but it comes with a free 24 hours cloud storage. The biggest selling point of this camera of course for me is that it is from SmartThings. Fully integrated in the SmartThings app so I can have it automatically start recording when I am out for lunch. I can access the recordings easily under SmartThings video after that. The last item I have under home security is the smart door lock. So I'm using the Xiaomi Bluetooth smart door lock which is the only device left in my Mi Home app. 
Like I said in my previous Q&A video, if I know that I'll be using the SmartThings solution, I will have gotten a compatible supported log inside the SmartThings platform instead. Nonetheless, I can still set and manage user profiles on this log which is super useful. It also has a full log with timestamps on all the events going on. There are a bunch of automation you can set, but since I'm not using Mi Home anymore, I can't make use of them. So this is the difference between a smart door lock and a normal digital lock. A smart door lock will have all these software features that you can set. Your home network is very crucial of how well your smart home is going to perform. For any smart home setup, I will always recommend you to get a mesh Wi-Fi system. It is the best and easiest way to get strong Wi-Fi coverage and signal for all your smart home devices using a single broadcast network ID. At the same time, not powerful to the extent of interrupting your neighbor's Wi-Fi, which is what you will want in terms of security and performance. What I'm using is the Netgear Orbi system. The specs for that is great, and what I particularly like is the app comes with analytics data on your Wi-Fi. You can even set up your home testing of the signal and speed in the app. I love that it comes with four Ethernet ports on the main and satellite unit. So I have my main unit placed inside the DB board. For the three wired connection, one is going to my study room, which is then connected to a switch that provides wired connection to the PCs, TV, and Somfy hub. The other one is going to my gym room, connecting to my laptop directly. And last one is going to my entertainment room, connecting to my satellite unit, which also provide wired connection to my PS5, TV, and SmartThings hub. Despite using many ZigBee and Z-Way smart home devices already, you can see that I still have over 30 connected devices, which is beyond the recommendation of my current Orbi model. So I will most likely upgrade my equipment this year end and move over to Wi-Fi 6 at the same time. Voice assistants. There are basically only two choices for me here since I'm not an iPhone user. That means Google or Alexa. One of the benefits of using a central hub-based smart home solution is you are flexible to use any voice assistant or even both if you want. For my case, I'm using Google Home. There are basically only three ways to trigger your voice assistant. One is of course using your mobile phone. The other two are using either a smart speaker or a smart display device. I don't have a specific brand preference in the world of speakers, so I will always prefer those that comes with a voice assistant or integration with smart things. For me, in my living room, I have the Boss 500 soundbar linked to Google Home. I turn the sensitivity to the max so that I can pretty much trigger Google Assistant even when I'm in the study room or even in the kitchen. Of course, that will also depend on how loud is your voice. Google TV time. Enjoy watching. In my master bedroom, I now place my Google Nest Hub display on my bedside table. Besides having voice assistant, this kind of smart display also double as a photo frame, a clock, providing smart home controls, and also let you do video calls. What I have here is the second gen Nest Hub. So one of the new features is sleep sensing. Instead of wearing a smart watch to do sleep tracking, the Google Nest Hub can now do that using sensors and sound. I have been playing around with this lately, pretty interesting. With this smart speaker setup, I can do message broadcasting like a PA system, which I find it quite cool and funny at the same time. Wake up, breakfast is ready. My entire smart home setup is based around the SmartThings platform. Let's take some time to talk about it. I feel that it is a solution that is able to cater to three levels of users. SmartThings have a long list of natively supported devices. The best practice is of course going with these devices, that's the easiest. So the level 1 basic users will stop here. Level 2 advanced users will be those that are able to leverage on the SmartThings developers community, follow some simple steps to integrate those devices that are not natively supported. For example, in my case, Akara and Govi. Then lastly, at level 3, the super users will be those that is able to make use of smart apps to set more complex and interesting automations. So overall, it's a hub-based solution that all sorts of users can use, unlike Home Assistant or Habitat, which are not very beginner-friendly. The SmartThings Hub retails at 199 SGD, supports ZigBee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi. If you need to extend ZigBee signals, you can get these very cheap repeaters from IKEA. I have a couple of these. It's a smart home solution that I've been using and no regrets at all. In case you're not aware, the entire smart home industry will have a big change in the future. 
The big three, Google, Amazon, Apple, together with the Alliance, are coming together for this project called Meta. I will not go into the details what Meta is about. You can go check it out at the website. The important takeaway is SmartThings is part of it. And they are also making lots of upcoming improvements like having more local automations, which are more reliable. Here are some videos from the channel Automate Your Life if you want to find out more. Again, I need to reiterate that the reason why I'm using so many different brands is mainly because I just want to try out the different products. And also because I know that the SmartThings platform is able to support to a certain extent. Although not every single devices are integrated, it's not really a big deal. Able to have about 80% of the devices consolidated on SmartThings, I'm pretty happy with that. There is no perfect solution out there. As long as it works for you, you are benefiting from it and enjoying it on your everyday life, then that's good enough. And that's all for this first part video of my 2021 Smart Home Tour. The second part will focus only on the renovation aspect, also covering some of the reno regrets which many of you are interested to know as well. These videos really took me a lot of time and effort to do, so to show your support, give it a like and share this with your friends if they are trying to set up a smart home. Thank you for watching as always and stay tuned for the next one. Bye!